Hello, welcome to another video by LSX Engines Tuning Marine. In this video, I'm about to install the camshaft of the 5.7 liter Mercruiser V8 engine. And uh, I just want to say, first of all, um, I'm doing this a little bit out of order, at least in my opinion, I'm doing it out of order. Um, I now have all eight pistons installed, and uh, that's a lot of work to get that to, to that stage. Um, so at this time, um, if, when I put this camshaft in, this, these are the cam bearings, which are brand new. I pressed them in in one of the previous videos. Um, if the camshaft binds up or something doesn't work or the uh, bearings are uh, bad, I will have to knock them back out and uh, do it over. So really, I should have put the camshaft in first and done the, timings, the uh, timing gears before I put the pistons in. Because if you have a problem then, you can stop and fix it. Um, there's a lot of work involved in, or uh, there's a lot of difficulty involved in replacing the cam bearings. You have to approach from both ends. You can't do it on the engine stand. So uh, I'm just saying that it would be easier to replace cam bearings or fix the cam problem without the pistons in there. Because once you put the pistons in there, you've got in the crankshaft, now you've got extra weight that's a little bit more difficult to deal with. So my point is, I'm, I did things a little bit out of, order, out of order, in my opinion. I should have put the cam and the timing gears on before I put the pistons and rods in, but that's too late now. So what I'm about to do now, this is the old gear. I'm using a two, two, uh, two jaw puller, gear puller, and I'm gonna pull the old gear off. Cam in, I wanna show you uh, what I'm, what the cam I'm installing. This is the customer's cam. It's a Mercruiser uh, 5.0 five liter camshaft. It came out of his five liter. By the way, this project, I'm upgrading his boat from a five liter to a 5.7. That's in the title of the uh, playlist. But anyway, that's his cam, and this is a brand new, uh, same exact cam, brand new. It's Mer Mercruiser, actually it's a GM part number 1407935, I believe. And it's known as the HT383 cam. Um, so it's also, but it's the Marine uh, camshaft for 5.7 and 5, same part number for 5.0 and 5.7 inches. So. Um, you, if you inspect the cam, this cam was uh, in very good shape, had very low hours on it, so I'm uh, basically going to reuse it. If you wipe on your finger on the lobe, you don't, there's no grooves, no, no nothing on the lobe, so the cam's in great shape. So I'm reinstalling the customer's cam back in this 5.7 since it's the same part number as the 5.7 cam. Um, I just wanted to show you a brand new one next to it. Um, this is what's called a fuel pump lobe. A, a, a modern, uh, say a, a truck version of this cam would not have that. All right, as I was saying, this is a truck version of the same cam, or it's not the same cam. It's actually, it's called an L31 cam. It's like a 90, uh, 96 to 99 uh, Chevrolet 5.7 truck cam. And um, this is it's not in that bad a shape, but uh, it's for a truck, not a V8. I mean, not, not a marine application. So as I was saying, you see, since this was fuel inject, this was a fuel injected truck, it does not have, it does not have the load to drive a fuel, a mechanical fuel pump. So if you have a mechanical fuel pump on your boat, you can't use this cam. So I just want to point that out. So anyway, um, about to, oh, and uh, these gears, these are called a uh, billet steel camshafts. They require a special gear called a melanized gear. I'll put the, I don't have the part number handy. Um, I'll put it in the uh, description of this video as to which gear you need to buy to go with these cams, or these, these two cams. I'm, I'm not even sure about this one, but um, it looks to be steel also, so I'm pretty sure the same gear goes with this cam. So I'm about to put this cam in the engine and then uh, put the timing chain on. All right, I was in the process of sliding this cam in and I got it this far, but I was losing my handle or my grip on the end of the camshaft uh, in order to push it on in further. So what I like to do is install the gear. Um, this is a temporary bolt just to hold it on the uh, camshaft. I install the gear and that gives me a handle with, with within which to hold the cam and slide them in. So that's what I'm about to do now. Um, once the cam's in, there's a retainer plate that goes here that holds the cam in from keeps them sliding in and out. You need that on the roller cam. And then the, once the retainer plate is in and torqued with a blue lock tied in the bolts, I then put the uh, chain on the big gear and then assemble the thing and uh, time it. I'll show you how to do that in a second. All right, the cam is now installed in the block or inserted in the block and it rotates freely with my fingers. It's a little thick because I put uh, the Lucas assembly lube on it. All right, it's now been a couple of days since the last segment of this video and uh, I ran into a problem. So the, uh, the cam retaining plate that uh, belonged to the customer on his five liter engine was this one right here. 
and it did not fit the block. And uh, the reason being is uh, these holes, these holes were too far apart. I'm just gonna just hold it up here like that. So you see that the, uh, the this retainer plate was, uh, the holes are too close together to fit in this block. So I did a little research and it turns out that uh, from my, 1987 to 1990, the block used a different cam retain, cam retaining plate because these holes are further apart. So I found out what this part number was. It is part number 1008-128, I believe. If it's if I'm wrong, I'll put it in the description, but um, I believe that's right. So I had to order a new cam plate and it took two days to get here, so now it's here. So I've now mounted the cam retaining plate. I put Loctite on these two bolts and torqued these bolts to 106 inch pounds. These are Torx head bolts, low profile button head bolts. And you have to use those to clear the gear that goes over the top now. So I'm about to put the timing set on and I've already installed the gear, the uh, top gear. And to do that, I used a series of, um, let's see if I can show you here. So to pull it on, I started, pull, I, just, I started by pulling it on with this gear. In other words, I put this, I put this on the snout, pushed it on as far as I could with my hand, and then pulled it on with this gear, with the old gear, and this, uh, this is a uh, crankshaft bolt, and pulled it on. We're using various spacers so that the bolt doesn't bottom out in the crank. And then uh, once I got it on so far, then I use another spacer between, put this spacer on here like that, and then use the gear again to push it on. So through uh, some swapping and switching out of some spacers i was able to pull it or pull the new gear onto the crank so at this time um i'm about to uh put the timing chain on so what i've already done is um i placed this is your your uh, cam gear and i've already placed it on there so that the uh, the cam is oriented in the right position so what you want to do and this is pretty common uh knowledge so there's a dot on this gear right there. I believe that's the right dot. Yeah. So there's a, it's not really a dot. It's actually a machine in a hole in the, in the metal. I'm trying to get it where you can see it better. The light makes it like paint, but it's not. It's the actual uh, drilled in hole. So hold it like that, maybe see it. No, still can't see the hole. But anyway, um, there's a dot on the on this gear and there's a dot on that gear. That There's the dot right there. So I don't see any other dots. So. You rotate this crank till that dot is at uh, basically at the six o'clock position, and you rotate this gear to this dot is at the twelve o'clock position. They're they're in other words they're uh, opposing each other, right right off right opposite each other, and they line up through the center line of the crankshaft and the camshaft, and you uh, you get them positioned, and then you put the chain on the upper gear, I mean you put the chain on the smaller gear, and then you and you just swing this into position, and hopefully they line up. And if they do line up when you get it all installed, then you're good. Then you just install the three bolts in the center. You know, I'll tell you what the torque is in a minute. I'll also use blue Loctite on that. But um, this cam will pull that, this gear will pull that cam out and, and as it engages with it. So I'm about to do that now. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's lined up. Okay, as a dry run, I've got both gears mounted, not mounted, but set in place. Uh, lower gear, this gear is set in place here. And you see how I got the dots lined up. That dot lines up with that dot and they're both in line with the two shafts. So that's how you know they're tied. The timing chain is now installed and I've torqued these three bolts to uh, 18 foot pounds, which is 216 inch pounds. Most of your uh, foot pound torque wrenches can't go down, go down as low as 18 inch foot pounds. So I use my inch pound torque wrench. So the timing set's now installed. You can see how the dots are still lined up. Everything's torqued in, everything's all good. By the way, this, this kit was, uh, this timing set was a uh, Melling 3-202SA. This is a heavy duty truck timing set. It's what uh, General Motors used on their heavy duty trucks and uh, from the, in the late 1990s. And uh, it's the it's a higher quality set. This, set. this set's about 50 bucks off Rock Auto, which has about the cheapest prices around. So um, it's, it's a really good set and I recommend use this in a marine application. It's a roller. You see how it's got this sprocket, so it's a roller chain. And it's, and it's very, it's on here pretty good, pretty tight. There's no play in this cam, I can tell you that. All right, before I close up this, uh, from this engine, for, close up this timing set with the timing cover, I want to point out some uh, some things. Um, 
you can buy gear sets that are either two degrees advanced or two degrees retarded and then in that case you'll have multiple types of dots to line up so the package will explain what to do but let's say you have a square dot a triangular dot and a round dot so if you want to get say it's two degrees advanced you do take the square dot put it here and the square dot here and put it there and that'll give you the uh the time it'll reset the cam two degrees advanced or whatever the package says and likewise if it's a triangle you just line up the triangle and triangle and it'll do two degrees retarded maybe or whatever the, again whatever the package says so you can get sets that it's not always a dot it could be a square it could be a triangle whatever but you match whatever the symbol is you match the two symbols up to get the uh, feature that the, the time set is trying to provide to you in the last video segment i was going to put the uh was about to put the front timing cover on and um the cover i was going to use is this plastic one it's for vortex uh v8s from 1996 up to whenever to the end of the small block and i thought this would fit the old ones i didn't know there was a difference but what as it turns out this cover will not fit on this block the these rubber seals right here by my finger run out and they run out this flange is not wide enough so they run out outside the flange and it leaves a little hole in each on the back side of the, the little uh, on the back side of this cover it leaves a hole right there it, basically at each bolt it leaves a hole behind it for oil and air to escape or leak so this cover will not fit this engine um so to remedy that problem i'll show you what i did get i went and bought this uh this old-fashioned or it's not old-fashioned to me but this one was on all the v8 motors back in the 70s 80s this is a 19 uh late early 1990s and late 80s metal timing covers just steel stamped steel comes with a uh, seal in it and also comes with all the bolts down in there so this is uh gonna solve my problem with the timing cover i just hope it fits and clears that that uh, gear all right it is now the next day and i'm proceeding to try to get this timing cover on i um, ran into a problem yesterday in that in my attempt to put the plastic cover on i had i pulled this dial out because the plastic cover has the dials built in and they slip into the hole so i pulled that dial out this dial here i could not get out i tried and tried and tried and could not vice grips wouldn't spin it or anything so it just chewed it up so i ended up uh, just cutting it off flush with the surface i used the dremel tool and just took it on down to the, uh, the uh, surface there um so anyway the plastic cover didn't fit so i bought this metal cover as i explained in a previous segment i bought this metal cover to go on here and guess what it uses the dowels to help align it well i've got a dowel over here which i put back in the hole but i don't have this dowel is i can't get that out i'm not going to try so um in order to line this thing up i need to put the harmonic balancer so let me get this thing up here there in order to line this cover up i have to put the cover on but don't tighten it down install this balancer and then go ahead and drive the balancer on into the seal on the cover to line up the seal concentric with the balancer and then i can tighten up the cover the bolts on the cover at least some of them i may not get all of them because it'd be behind here but i can get to enough of them where i can tighten up the cover to where it won't move then i can pull the balancer back off and then i can tighten up the cover kind of a pain in the butt way to do this and i'm going to figure out a different way soon but that's about the only way i have right now so um in order to pull this in order to install this harmonic balancer i had to go get this tool and uh i bought this at o'reilly's it's a harmonic balancer installation tool the new timing cover comes with a uh, paper gasket so um, i've gone ahead and smeared gray silicone seal it on the block itself on the flange where the gasket is and uh, I'm now about to apply the gasket and then I'll put seal on the uh, cover and then put the bolts in. Before I put this cover on, I want to explain a few things about it and uh, just point out some of its downsides. One, this uh, this uh, ledge or whatever you want to call it for the uh, oil pan seal to sit on is spot welded to the, to the cover, but behind it, there was what looked to me like gaps. Uh, I couldn't see light between them, but maybe they put a seal in there. I don't know. but. Uh, just to be sure, I smeared gray silicone in that little crack all the way around this lip because if oil gets behind there, it'll be outside your oil pan and it could leak. So I, I've tried to seal up a leak with the gray silicone in that little gap down in there. The other downside of this timing cover 
Um, if you look at the front of it, uh, you may not notice it right away, but um, there's no timing marks. There's usually a timing mark somewhere right here, welded on or, or something, but there's no timing marks on this cover. So I'm gonna have to create my own timing marks, which it's not a problem, I can do that, but I just want to point out that uh, um, if you want to, uh, you should get a timing mark or get a timing cover that has the timing marks either welded on it or they make a little tab that bolts here and it gives you timing marks. I may try to find the tab myself. So just want to point that out. Um, it was inexpensive. It was about $17, $18 and I was kind of in a hurry to get this motor done. So I bought this, but if, it hadn't been, if I hadn't been in such a hurry, I probably would have ordered one with the timing marks already built on it. I have now fully uh, tightened on the harmonic bouncer with the harmonic bouncer installation tool. I'll do a another video on how to use that. But um, the bouncer is now fully seated, but it's touching the cover right here and probably on the other side too. Um, so I'm about to tighten, the cover's not tightened down. So hopefully when I tighten this cover down, it'll pull it away and the bouncer won't touch the cover, but we'll have to see about that. Um, if the bouncer does touch it, I'll just take a, a hammer, I guess, dent the cover at this point. I've got to get this thing to work, so I'll, that's, that'll be my solution. All right, I have now um, bolted down the timing cover here, here, let's see, no, there, there, and there, and there to hold it in place. The timing cover is rubbing on the harmonic bouncer right here and right there. Luckily, there's an indentation here across through here. So as long as I can, I can dent it in right through here and right through here, it should work. And uh, so that also tells me I can dent it in at least as deep as that, because otherwise that would be hitting the chain. So I'm gonna take a tool and try to put a little dent right through here and here to make this thing clear. This, uh, this getting this timer cover has <laughs> proven to be a pain in the tail. All right, I've now taken a hammer and a, uh, I took a half inch impact, uh, half inch uh, socket extension and I use the uh, rounded end of it to knock this cover in, dent this cover in wherever it made a mark from the harmonic bouncer right through here and right through here. And I spun the crank around to see if the chain was scraping inside. I didn't hear anything, so I think I'm clear there. Um, so this timing cover has proved to be a, a pain in the tail, but it's, uh, at this point I don't have a choice. So I'm now about to put the rest of the screws in and tighten this thing up because it was the timing cover was centered when I had the harmonic bouncer in there. Um, one other thing I want to point out, these, these bolts are so close to the cover, I can't hardly get a socket in there, so it's a pain in the butt to even put these screws in. So, um, I do not recommend this product if you have a choice. If you don't have a choice, well, get it. All right, the timing cover's now on. I've got all the bolts tightened down. Uh, another drawback to this timing cover is I can't get a socket in here to tighten these things down. I think I mentioned that already, but I had to tighten them down manually with an open end wrench. So it all snug down um, and now it's on. So I'm not, one thing I'm concerned about is whether the, the knowing the quality of this timing cover. Oh, by the way, it's got very sharp edges. So if you brush against you, you slice yourself open. So you'll be careful about that too. But um, I'm worried about the water pump flange or water pump body hitting the edge of this thing. So I might have to take a hammer to that too. Especially over here, it looks like it's pretty close right in there. We'll see though. Um, so the timing cover's now on. And that wraps up this long video about installing a timing cover on a 5.7 Merc Cruiser engine when you're swapping from a newer model 5.0 to an older model 5.7 block. These are the kind of things you'll run into. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, subscribe to my channel if you find this beneficial.